Hi, I'm Tim, and welcome to WatchYouWant.com. Thanks for logging on. Today, we're looking at one of the latest references from the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Offshore Collection. This model here is actually the reference 26400 SO. This is stainless steel with a ceramic bezel, and it's the 44mm reference with matching ceramic square section, rectangular pushers, and ceramic crown. So let's get into a, a little bit about where this 44 millimeter case shape came from, how it became part of the mainstream Royal Oak line, and what the latest reference has to offer versus perhaps earlier models in the Royal Oak continuity. So the 44 millimeter case is something that first appeared in 2004 with the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Offshore Juan Pablo Montoya Limited Edition. That famous watch, which was actually designed in conjunction with Audemars Piguet's subsidiary Richard Mille, was a groundbreaker in a lot of ways. It was the first appearance of that 44 millimeter case. It was the first appearance of the big squared off rectangular pushers. And it was also the first appearance of a display case back on an Audemars Piguet offshore reference. A lot of those features were carried over into subsequent limited editions before finally becoming a permanent part of an alternate 44 millimeter Royal Oak offshore model line later in the 2000s. Now the key thing about this watch is that compared to the earlier models, it has a larger tapisserie known as the mega tapisserie, not the grand tapisserie. It has a larger, burlier 44 millimeter case that actually sits a little bit larger on the wrist, but as I'll demonstrate with my six and a third inch wrist, it actually sits nicely on a reasonable sized wrist just because Audemars Piguet knows it's building a big watch and they wanted it to be wearable to an average human being. So if you're not, for instance, Shaq, this watch is still very viable. Now another key feature is that many of these watches also include a pin buckle as opposed to the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Offshore single fold deployant and many prefer this. This is one of the defining features that has really come to characterize in particular the 44s over the last couple of years. The so-called Royal Oak Offshore Diver rubber strap. First of all the Hornback Alligator is gorgeous but you can't take it in the water. But with a nice black muted strap look, you have a matte finish, you have a white metal, a dark complement, an easy to use pin buckle for precise fit, and you get the ability to take it in the water because after all, it is rubber. And it's a beautiful natural latex based rubber that feels beautiful against the wrist. More than that, this watch features a ceramic bezel, which is still a relatively recent technology introduction in the watchmaking world. And what that does is it basically imbues the bezel formerly prone to scratching and disfiguring and one of the most vulnerable parts of every watch but particularly Royal Oaks and it makes it as hard and indelible as the sapphire crystal on the dial itself. So the sapphire crystal being a 9 on the Mohs scale can only be scratched by a catastrophic impact or a diamond and the same is true of the ceramic but you still get those traditional Royal Oak and Royal Oak Offshore inset white gold bezel bolts. They're still present and correct, they're still gorgeous, and they provide great contrast as you see here. So automatically, even though this is a ceramic and stainless steel watch, you're getting a little bit of precious metal content. That's the Audemars Piguet luxury DNA that's inborn to every Royal Oak and Offshore. And the bezel is actually multifaceted, multi-finished with contrasting polish and brushed finishes. It's complex and attractive. As burly as it is, there's also a delicacy and refinement to it. Now, speaking of delicacy and refinement, the Audemars Piguet manufacture movement 3126-3840 is a definite step above prior JLC-based movements. As much as I love JLC, Audemars Piguet took account of the way people actually wear their offshores these days. And if I could just show you, this movement is based on a semi-free-sprung escapement, meaning the, the regulator, which can move and change the timing of the watch, in this case, it's still mobile, but it's screwed down so it can't move involuntarily. It moves when the watchmaker wants it to move, not when you, you know, smack the handrail or grab your car door too quickly, as in a conventional watch. Also, it has a full balance bridge. You can see it's anchored right here. It's anchored on both sides. It's not a cantilevered balance cock that can vibrate and shake and rattle the movement and upset the balance timing quite, the same, quite to the same extent. Uh, this will cushion the watch more from shock and timing variation due to shock. And then there's the big draw, which is, quite frankly, the finish of this movement. Beautiful beveling of all bridges, polishing of the screws, camphering of the slots, beveling of the circumference. 
you have a solid gold winding rotor that's also gorgeously finished. This, in this case, it's actually a black deposited gold, but gold nonetheless. And the movement itself is finished to the highest standards of the Audemars Piguet manufacturer. It's easy to forget through their now long history with sports watches and aggressive designs that Audemars Piguet is a member of the Swiss watchmaking Holy Trinity. Along with Vacheron, Constantin, and Patek Philippe, they collectively established the standard for high-end finish in Swiss luxury watches during the 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s, and AP continues that tradition to this day. This movement, which has a 50-hour power reserve, ceramic rotor bearings that need no maintenance nor lubrication, which is actuated by a vertical clutch chronograph module, not the clumsy horizontal clutch that creates play in the stop, start, reset action of the chronograph. Everything about this watch, from the movement design and architecture to the way it's finished, to the technology employed in the bezel and the detailing employed in the dial, speaks to the quality of an Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Offshore. This watch has gone from being an iconoclast in the early 90s to an icon in its own right today. And it's grown up. It's grown up a lot, from an outsourced movement to an in-house movement, from a dial that was the same grand tapisserie as the Royal Oak to its own identity, the mega tapisserie with bigger features and bigger cut square sections. And it's innovated with the use of ceramic, with the use of rubber. It's innovated with the use of new styles for chronograph actuators and new finishes for sports watch movements, as well as rugged architectures designed to accommodate the fact that today, the luxury watch owner wants it all. He wants to play hard, he wants to work hard, he wants something that looks great, but doesn't require any kind of sacrifice in terms of how it's used or when it's used or when it's worn. This watch is ready for the beach. As I like to say, it's ready for the boardwalk or the boardroom. A versatile piece in 44 millimeter stainless steel. It's very rugged, it's very wearable. As you saw on my rel relatively petite wrist, this watch actually suits a wide variety of wrist sizes, and if you're into the big watch look, if you're into the offshores, rest assured, this is a great fit for just about any wrist, provided you're into the look. And the look is spectacular. Available with full boxes, papers, documents of providence, all instruction manuals and accessories from WatchYouWant.com, this Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Offshore Stainless Steel Ceramic Bezel 44mm reference 26400SO is available we are the luxury pre-owned watch authorities. Check out this Royal Oak Offshore, and I'm confident that if you want something big, bold, iconic, and versatile, this just might be the watch you want.